Hello, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a simple CBG extraction. You'll need a separatory funnel. That's the main mechanical item that you'll need. You want to have some distilled water. You want to put about 200 milliliters of distilled water into the separatory funnel and then preferably chill the whole thing um, overnight. And it's sitting here at 9.9 uh, .9 degrees, 9 point around nine degrees Celsius, so it's chilled. And you'll need a glass or a ceramic plate, and you'll need a mason jar. And of course, you'll need CBG hemp flour. Now there's a couple things I wanna point out about this. First of all, this is not cannabis sativa. It has less than 0.3 percent THC, Delta 9 THC. So this is legal in my state. And uh, so I have to make that disclaimer, of course. Uh, furthermore, if you are trying this extraction method, thinking that this will work for cannabis sativa, uh, don't think that it's going to just be an exact match because this is chemically different than Delta 9 THC. And it is also mechanically different than Delta 9 THC. The cannabigerol behaves more mechanically like a white crystalline waxy substance. Whereas your Delta 9 THC and your CBD oils and other cannabis sativa extracts are going to be more oily and resinous and have a more yellow color. And I will get to the alchemy of that later on and what the symbolism is there. This medicine that we're making essentially functions like a natural ibuprofen, and it has a little bit of an anti-anxiety uh, characteristic to it. And you'll need one last thing. Good old fashioned Everclear. Um, <clears throat> I like to get it a little bit warm, but not hot, just slightly warm out in the sun. So now we're going to take our mason jar, and we've added approximately five grams of very dry hemp flour from the strain that produces CBG. And we're going to add uh, enough ethanol to thoroughly saturate and, and have a little extra uh, left over. And I'm gonna measure the ethanol as I go so that I'll know kind of, uh, kind of how much generally to add. We'll start with 100 milliliters, approximately. It doesn't have to be dead on. <clears throat> Boo Boo said it does, but don't listen to him. Boo Boo. Boo Boo. You can't go outside right now. Because we're doing a video. I know. So, <clears throat> let's see. There's 100... I would say yeah, maybe 150 milliliters, and we have 200 milliliters of distilled chilled water here. And while we're doing this, we can go ahead and get a temperature. Yeah, about, there. Yeah, about 160. <clears throat> Let's get a temperature while we're doing this. Now, the trick of it is, this doesn't have to sit very long. We're only going to let it... Uh, shimmy there for about uh, a minute. I'm gonna take our ethanol, let's check the temperature. It's gonna take a minute to get the temperature. You can see it's already beginning to extract. Okay, so the alcohol is at about 31 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna use 160 milliliters. That should be about right because we're less than the 500 milliliter total of this particular uh, separatory funnel. And what we're gonna do is just shake it around vigorously very quickly. Really only need to do this for a minute or so. Otherwise it will begin to pick up a little too much color, which it probably already has. Now we're going to take 
this uh, quick rinse here and uh, rinse it through uh, the funnel. And as you can see, we have a separation going. Okay, so after our initial extraction here, we need to get this to separate. And the best way to do that is to let it chill in the refrigerator over time. I wouldn't shake it very much because some items require shaking and mixing. This one is already, you know, it, it doesn't need to be shaken very much. Just gently swirl it once or twice, that's about it. Before I put it in the fridge, I'm going to add probably another 200 milliliters of distilled water because I really want to change the solubility characteristics of the alcohol so that it can't hold on to the CBG anymore. And the more we put, the more creamy toned it's going to get, which is exactly what we want, because that is essentially the plant wax, which is the what CBG really mechanically acts like a wax. And so that's, uh, we want that to drop out a solution and wax of course is not soluble in water, but it is soluble in alcohol, which is how we got it from the plant. But now we want to pull the alcohol out. So the alcohol and the water will go together and the wax will, those little particles of wax will eventually float up to the top. Just for the record, I ended up adding 300 milliliters of distilled water back to it. Um, I started off with 200 milliliters of chilled distilled water. So that would be 500 milliliters total plus the 160 milliliters of ethanol. So um, I guess this 500 milliliters is up to that line and this whole, has a little more capacity to it. But um, you basically just want enough water to get the job done. Okay, so here we are three days later. I had it in the refrigerator for about five hours and then we needed room, so put it in the closet and you can see that it's separated into two layers and a lot of your plant waxes and the CBG, uh, any of the water soluble substances are gonna go down here and the oils and waxes are going to float to the top so we're going to separate this and then let it dry out and with your separatory funnel you want to take the top off so that it doesn't have any vacuum chugging Ooh -ooh. so i'm going to separate the uh, two different kinds of fluid Okay, I probably need to do this last part without the phone here. Okay, there's our CBG. And probably the best way, let's see if we can, there we go, to get that out of there is to rinse it through either with distilled water or alcohol. I'm gonna try rinsing this out with a little alcohol. It may dissolve some of it, but then it should recrystallize as it dries out over time. And then we'll dry out this and see if we get anything, the water soluble substances, see if anything comes out there. So an interesting thing happened. I put about 52 milliliters of alcohol in here and it separated and it was had a big chunk of white um, material. And I looked up the solubility of CBG and it is soluble in ethanol. So I said, well, maybe it just hasn't totally dissolved yet. So I shook it around and sure enough, it just totally dissolved in that alcohol. So I'm going to rinse it uh, or drain it off into this pan and we'll get a nice recrystallization. And I've drained this off into here. Everything's looking good. It's nice and clear as you can see. And we're just going to let it dry out and see what we get. So I decided to filter this because 
I've got to looking at it and I noticed some very fine particulates. And since CBG is alcohol soluble, I figured I could just um, filter it through and then um, maybe add a little extra ethanol to rinse it off and, and uh, run it through a filter. Garf thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, Garf's um, 21 years old. Yeah. He's a good old boy. He always likes his snacks. After running it through the filter, you can see we captured some plant material and gunk, and the solution came out even much more cleaner of CBG and ethanol. Let's let that evaporate in the pan here and see what we get. And here we are after drying out the CBG alcohol mixture. And we have pure CBG crystals. And they have a really neat pattern, almost like, um, I guess you would call it spangling, like what you see on galvanized metal. I'm going to scrape this and uh, we'll have our CBG powder. It, it scritches right up. Kind of a nice waxy, almost a soapy kind of a texture, but uh, looking pretty good. Okay, there's your CBG can of buy Gerol. And it may have some other plant wax and, um, you know, like terpenes and other, anything that's uh, soluble in alcohol that the plant might produce, but uh, mostly CBG, I bet. In conclusion, I found CBG to be a relatively useful substance with some pain relieving qualities and very few side effects. The only disadvantage being that if it's used um, over any period of time, um, a sort of tolerance builds up and it's less effective. But overall, I think it's a very safe substance that needs to be studied further. When it comes to the alchemy of the whole operation, I had an epiphany and realized that I wasn't the alchemist in this operation. The plant itself is the alchemist, because if you consider the color change phases, black, white, and yellow or red, <clears throat> these all represent stages of either uh, decomposition in the, in the black stage, purification in the white stage, and conjoinment in the yellow or red stage. So when you really sit and think about it, the plant itself or nature itself or God itself does this. Um, starting with the decomposition in the soil and then the plant produces its own purified substances and then as the fruit ripens it may change to a red color or a yellow color as time goes by which would be a conjoinment or uh, there's some two substances coming together in that case <clears throat> so I found that to be pretty interesting and one last thing uh, the laws in this country are so screwed up that I have to be careful about where I study what. Um, for example, in Arkansas, it, it, I could have studied something like Delta 9 THC. However, in Arkansas, had I done the Kratom video, I could have got 30 years in prison because they have a rule that says nothing more than two grams of uh, Kratom powder in a state park, which is like... That's insane, that's criminal, that's a criminal law. That'd be like saying, if you have a shot of whiskey in a state park, you go to prison for 30 years. It's like, yeah, maybe there should be some regulation on the substance if you think it's causing a problem, but uh, the laws in this country are just completely batshit. So, that's all for today. <laughs>